Now we'll wait just a few more minutes. We're hoping you know, more of the planning commission will will uh, come in and uh, be seated. So if you'll bear with us, maybe four more minutes, three more minutes, something like that, till about five after. We'll see if. Yeah. Oh, this special Port Orchard Joint uh, Council meeting and Planning Commission meeting to order. This is June 5th, 2014, 7 p.m. at City of Port Orchard City Hall. Uh, would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay, thank you, and uh, we're, we're uh, kind of hoping that a few, a few more will come, but uh, we'll just uh, continue with uh, business item two. Uh, Clerk Reinerson, would you tell us about? All right, good evening, Mayor, Council. Good evening. So pursuant to Port Orchard Municipal Code 5.32080 requires council approval on an organization requesting to operate a carnival within the city. On June 4th, 2014, Paradise Amusements submitted an application requesting to hold a, count, a carnival in the South Kitsap Mall parking lot beginning Thursday, June 5th, and ending Sunday, June 8th. They have paid the required fees and has met the city's insurance requirements. Due to receiving the paperwork on short notice, staff is seeking ratification of the issuance of a carnival license to Paradise Amusements. And I uh, believe that the council and the mayor have been provided a staff report, their application and comments provided by the fire department, public works, planning, finance department. I think that's it, so. Just looking for ratification of them to hold the continue to hold the count, uh, carnival. Uh, yes. I move to ratify the issuance of a carnival license for Paradise Amusements to be held in the South Kitsap Mall parking lot beginning Thursday, June 5th, that's today, 2014, and ending Sunday, June 8th, 2014. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion, questions? Yes, Mr. Patonson. Yes, how do we get to where we're operating today, but not adopting this till this evening. They didn't let us know till yesterday. Is that what? So I was just questioning how, how, we, how we got here. Um, it's my understanding that the Paradise Amusement had contacted the city um, approximately two weeks ago, um, spoke to a member of the planning uh, department. Um, when they spoke to the planning department, they requ were requested to fill out a certificate of occupancy permit. Um, when they filled out the certificate of occupancy permit um, about a week and a half ago, they were ready to pick that up. Um, they first asked the city if there was any documentations that they needed to um, hold the event, and that's when they said, yeah, you need a CFO. So they came in, filled out the CFO, um, uh, came back another day or two later um, to pick up the CFO. Um, upon picking up that CFO, they noticed that they were issued the wrong CFO. Um, came back, and when they come back for the second CFO, it was determined after the planning department spoke with the fire authority that they didn't need a CFO, rather they needed a, um, a fire permit. So they filled out the fire permit, um, was under review. Um, Tuesday evening, I was out and about noticed that there was some equipment stored in the parking lot of Goodwill and thought, hmm, that's an odd place to store some equipment outside of city limits. So when I came in in the morning, um, I contacted the police chief, I reviewed the code and the police chief has the uh, authority to um, enforce that. So I asked the chief to go down and pay him a visit, have them come and see my office. Um, we're the ones that issue the permit. Uh, when she came down that morning, she had that's when she had disclosed that she's been working with the city for the last couple of weeks. Um, so due to miscommunication, the proper paperwork wasn't filed and noticed until Tuesday. And that's when we realized that uh, um, it needs council action before it can happen. Um, spoke um, to legal counsel 
And so since we've already made a notice for a special meeting, it was appropriate to add this to the agenda seeking ratification. The uh, amusement did open at five. Um, they do have the permit and um, upon ratification of the council. So they are un under the understanding that if it does not pass tonight, then we will move forward with um, shutting them down. Um, if the council approves, then they'll move forward. They'll get a phone call from me as soon as we're done saying you can proceed. I was just going to say, I think these are always a little annoying when we find ourselves behind the eight ball and we kind of want to have this tendency to want to you know, tell them to shape up and all that stuff. But things happen. We understand that. I, I think they've got all their permissions and I personally don't have a problem with it. Yes. My only comment was, did they get the fire inspection done? Memo, um, Roger, in Chief, here. The Greg Rogers memo says, a fi final inspection of the carnival will be required before opening by a member of the South Kitsap Fire and Rescue Prevention. Since we know they opened and their official application wasn't until yesterday, this is requiring that they request a fire inspection at least two days in advance of opening. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering if that's been done or not. I don't have confirmation that it has, but I did speak to Greg Rogers, letting him know that this was moving forward. It was going to be council action. I told him the start time, so I'm assuming they've connected, um, but I, I can confirm that. Um, yes, Mr. Klaus. For clarification, the motion refers to it as South Kitsap Mall. I think it's Town Square Mall, and the application refers to Town Square Mall, so I'm not sure if that's... That's a typo on my part. I apologize. So it should be Town Square Mall? Yes. yes. Any other question? And the second would agree to change it then. Sure. Yes, that's fine. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor of approving the application say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay? Carries. And just, just to hopefully ease the council's mind, um, um, I'll be working with the city attorney just to kind of review the code. We did notice that it hadn't been updated in, in some time, so we'll kind of review it and kind of update it and kind of do a little more um, public awareness to um, make sure that they know to contact the city clerk's office. I mean, it is on our website, but you know, somehow there's a disconnect, but we'll just make sure that our code is, is pretty clear. Okay, thank you. Number three, presentation. Council, planning commissioners, and uh, citizens of Port Orchard. Um, I'm here to introduce students from the University of Washington tonight tonight who are going to give a presentation on the periodic update to the city's comprehensive plan. Um, as you're aware, the city must, uh, must conduct a periodic update to its comprehensive plan every eight years. And so we last did this in 2008. And in 2016, uh, in June, we have to have an update completed. So in last year's budget process, I requested some funds to hire uh, this graduate student class to assist in the public process of facilitating the visioning process and updates to the land use and housing elements of the plan. And over the last six months, I've worked with uh, the eight students before you and the professor and the TA on an update to the comprehensive plan. And I'm really pleased with how things have turned out. Um, I, I see a lot of the members of the public that are here tonight were in, uh, involved in some of the visioning workshop meetings and open houses that were held. We held a number of focus groups and uh, really sought to get as much public input as we possibly could. Uh, after reading through the final document, which has been handed out to you tonight, I read through it over the last couple of days, uh, I really feel that the students have captured a lot of what the public was saying. And I, I see things in the report that I heard in meetings from the public, and I think they've done a good job of, uh, of capturing the public's vision for Port Orchard and, uh, and how they identify with Port Orchard. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to them now for their presentation. but. Uh, We'll have a question and answer with council member questions first and then uh, any questions from the public afterwards once their presentation is complete. And I'd ask that you save your questions for the end of the presentation and uh, that way they can get completely. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Mayor Mathis, uh, council members, members of the Planning Commission and residents of Port Orchard. My name is Andrew Brick. 
And please allow me to introduce the team that has been working with the city on this project. Port Orchard native Scott Bonjukian, Jason Garnum, Monica Joe, Paul Kopka, Ross McFarland, Michael Ulmer, Stephen Veith, our instructor, Mr. Richard Suppler, and our teaching assistant, Katie Haima. It has been our pleasure to work with the city on the launch of its 2016 comprehensive plan update. Tonight we're delivering a first touch presentation that will explain our process and introduce the product of our work, which consists of three major elements. The first is the plan's introduction, which lays out the major issues the city faces and establishes an overarching theme for the plan. The second is the land use element, the backbone of the comprehensive plan, which designates the proposed general distribution, locations, and extents of various land uses in the city. The third is the housing element, which ensures the vitality and character of established neighborhoods and proposes policies to accommodate growth and meet the housing needs of the community. We will also present suggestions for ways to move forward, answer your questions, and address your comments. We would like to start out by saying that from what we've seen in the city so far and, and what we've heard from the residents, we think that Port Orchard really is a special place in the Pacific Northwest and that its residents are in a position to take the things that are great about the city and make them truly excellent. While this presentation and our work product represent the best efforts, uh, represent our best efforts to understand the dynamics of Port Orchard and to provide a plan to achieve the goals we've heard residents express, no one knows the city as well as its residents. Our part in this process is but a small one in updating the comprehensive plan and we endeavor to pass the torch to the city tonight with this presentation and the plan we've delivered. As shown on this timeline, our process began with a review of the city's existing comprehensive plan and research into the conditions that presently exist in the city. This research revealed certain challenges the city is facing now and will likely face in the future. We presented these findings at a public meeting in early March and solicited feedback on what we believed were some of Port Orchard's most pressing issues. We took this information and developed some loose alternatives of the city's future and solicited further in input from the community during last month's open house. Additionally, we met with a variety of stakeholders throughout the community to gather additional information and perspectives and Port Orchard's, on, on Port Orchard's challenges, opportunities, and the preferences <coughs> of its residents. The draft sections of the plan we are submitting tonight reflect this information and present a way forward that we believe can put Port Orchard in a position to meet its challenges, seize its opportunities, and retain and enhance the aspects of the community that its residents hold most dear. It should be noted that the comprehensive plan update process will continue over the next 18 to 20 months with multiple planned opportunities for public participation and further feedback. I'll briefly go over some of the major trends we identified in our research. A full accounting of these findings is contained within the initial conditions report, which is one of the appendices available for your, for your review. <clears throat> As you can see from this graph, Port Orchard population is growing. Kitsap County allocated 8,235 of the county's projected new residents by 2035 to Port Orchard, and an additional 6,235 to the adjacent urban growth area. This represents a growth rate for the city proper of about 3% annually. Uh, so this represents a growth rate for the city proper of about 3% annually, not including any potential future annexations. Port Orchard is also getting older, but this data is likely skewed by recent annexations. The average age of the United States as a whole, though, increased from 35 in 2000 to 37 in 2010 due to the aging of the baby boomer population. Accommodating the changing needs and desires of residents, as well as retaining community vitality and ensuring residents remain connected to the things they need, are challenges many communities across the country are facing. Port Orchard has significantly, significantly grown in size in recent years and may continue to do so with future annexations of urban growth area land. This produces multiple challenges from retaining and growing community cohesiveness to keeping residents connected to vital city services. 
but it also represents opportunities to invest in the future, to target valuable tax revenues to the areas where it is most needed, and to grow Port Orchard's economy and its importance to Kitsap County as a whole. These issues helped frame both our outreach to the public and our drafting of the plan presented here tonight. Our outreach efforts, which are detailed in an appendix to the plan, began in January with an initial meeting with the mayor and members of city staff. To gather input from the public, we conducted two citywide open house and public meeting events, and as mentioned previously, conducted targeted outreach with various stakeholders throughout the community. We also gathered data from an online survey. The major issues that emerged will be covered in detail in just a moment, but overall we encountered a recurring theme during our engagement. The idea of making connections emerged from discussions with the mayor, council members, city staff, and residents of the city, as well as from our analysis of existing conditions. Some of the connections between these places and actors are strong, while others are loose or not as meaningful as they could be. For instance, strengthening connections between residents and the government and making connections between neighborhoods, particularly in light of recent annexations, were brought forward. The draft plan aims to strengthen these connections to help the community gel together to achieve its common goals. Furthermore, making connections between various elements of the comprehensive plan was an explicit goal of ours. The construct of dividing the plan into separate sections, while required by law, can lead to a lack of cohesiveness. But the plan needs to be a cohesive whole and needs to reflect the unified vision of the community. For this reason, we spent a fair amount of time and effort in crafting the plan's introduction, which establishes the common threads <coughs> that weave themselves through the draft plan elements before you tonight, and they can guide the process of updating the remaining elements. Thank you, Andrew. As was mentioned, as part of our public outreach efforts, we conducted two online surveys to get feedback from the city about where they want the city to go in the future. Uh, this presentation is briefly about the latter survey because we had a much larger, larger respondent base and we had a lot more useful information from that one. So this survey was conducted from April to May um, and the link to it uh, was distributed via email, Facebook, and short link on flyers posted in downtown businesses. I'll be discussing a few of the key questions and the full results are in one of the appendices in the plan. So one of the first, or one of the questions we asked was how respondents found out about the survey. Uh, this was in order to find out how Port Orchard could reach out to its citizens in future public engagement settings. Uh, two thirds of respondents reported that they found the survey via social media. And when asked more specifically where they found that, a great majority found them via the unofficial Port Orchard Facebook page, which is different from the city of, government, city of Port Orchard government Facebook page. So I think the takeaway here is that the city needs to get on the social media bounding a little more and uh, push more online uh, tools. Um, in relation to our earlier work, we asked a couple questions about what citizens believe Port Orchard's identity is. Most people identify the city as a small town and a bedroom community for commuters who work in other cities. And then when we asked what people think Port Orchard should be in the future, most wanted to remain a small town, but we're also interested in becoming a hub for social activities like festivals and community groups and, all, and a tourist attraction, which is in line with what we've heard a lot during our other public outreach. But the takeaway from this is that people are okay with change, but not drastic change. And then with transportation, although we didn't write about this, we had quite a few questions about it. Uh, we asked people what their mode of travel was for different types of activities. It's clear that most people drive to do all of their daily activities in Port Orchard, uh, but nodal, there is a notable percentage of people who bike and walk for recreational purposes. Uh, another question asked what people's top transportation problems were. Uh, the top three answers were road congestion, incomplete sidewalks and paths, and lack of bicycle infrastructure. Written comments included things like limited foot ferry hours, no bus service in Pormark Woods, the need to widen Tremont and Bethel, and some even suggested a small streetcar network. I think the takeaway here is that people want choices in how they get around. Similarly, the land use section had a lot of questions. A couple of the key ones here were uh, asking people where they do their shopping. A little less than half said so they actually do most of the shopping in Port Orchard, and the other half mostly did the shopping in Gig Harbor and Silverdale, which isn't too surprising because we know there's a lot of retail presence there. Um, and also not surprisingly, when asked what type of industries and jobs Port Orchard should attract, a lot of them said that we need, uh, Port Orchard needs more retail, and some also were interested in attracting high tech and startups and business and professional services. The takeaway here is that people want local shopping opportunities and commercial services. When asked about housing, over 80% said their housing costs are affordable. Um, 
one thing to remember is that the respondents of the survey did skew a little middle of the upper class, so we didn't catch all of Port Orchard's uh, different uh, economic groups. Uh, when asked what type of new housing people would like to see, a lot of people responded that they would like to see single-family homes and neighborhoods in keeping with the city's current character, but some are also interested in seeing mixed-use multifamily development, uh, like residences mixed with commercial services. Uh, this takeaway, the takeaway of this is uh, coming into our next question about growth strategy. Uh, when asked where new jobs and populations should go, uh, over half of respondents said that uh, concentrated growth in clusters, including the downtown, would be preferable. Um, the takeaway is that this supports our center strategy, which we'll be uh, going into in a few minutes. Good evening. I'm Jay, and I'm going to give a summary of the findings from our work with the Port Orchard community. <coughs> After four months of analysis and input from city leaders and residents, we've distilled what we've heard into four key themes that uh, form the foundation of the goals, principles, and recommendations that are in this plan. First, Port Orchard's downtown and waterfront are key assets for the community, and people of Port Orchard have a tremendous desire to revitalize these areas and strengthen their connections to them. Second, Port Orchard's residents hope to preserve their Port Orchard's identity its small town character into the future. Third, we heard from city leaders and residents alike that the bridges between the people and their government should be strengthened, that greater community involvement in the planning process is desired by both City Hall and the public. Fourth, we learned that Port Orchard, like so many communities, is facing the increasingly difficult challenge of meeting its infrastructure and service needs of a growing and changing population within the constraints of limited capital resources. Downtown revitalization is the default topic of, conversation, of almost any conversation about Port Orchard's future. Residents nearly unanimously express a desire for a downtown that is more lively and attractive than it is today and retains its historic character. Further, residents recognize that the city's waterfront is one of its key assets for attracting people and business to the city. An overview of prior plans for redevelopment dating from the early 1980s and continuing through the development of the downtown overlay district in the 2008 comprehensive plan confirms that the vitality of these areas is critical to Port Orchard's identity and are, is a key issue in mobilizing the public in city planning. Some of Port Orchard's greatest opportunities and challenges lay in utilizing these assets to strengthen the city's identity and to strengthen people's connections to these areas. In addition to the importance of the downtown waterfront, we also heard that residents and visitors alike to Port Orchard highly value the city's scenic natural setting and its proximity to other regional employment and urban areas. Within this context, residents highly enjoy Port Orchard's quiet residential character and its strong community spirit. Mindful that Port Orchard is certain to grow and change, people express a deep concern that the community retain its friendly small town feel into the future. City leaders recognize the, uh, the strong sense of pride and community spirit that the people have for their city. Uh, there's a sincere desire to harness the sense of community and engage more people in the planning process. Further, Oh, city leaders wish to, uh, wish to see better attendance at public meetings and hearings and to build more support for decisions that are made concerning Port Orchard's future. Further, concerned citizens constrained by the demands of busy lives would appreciate and benefit from community uh, communication and engagement strategies that inform and involve them in new and creative ways. Strengthening the bridges between the citizens and their government is of critical importance to the city. 
It ensures sound reasoning behind decisions. Uh, it encourages popular support for plans and projects. It informs both residents and leaders of the challenges and opportunities facing the city. And lastly, it promotes the many successes and achievements that have and will occur in Port Orchard. And lastly, through the analysis that we did uh, while compiling our initial conditions report and as informed by city leaders, we have learned that Port Orchard is facing the increasingly difficult challenge of maintaining levels of service for its critical infrastructure and community services within the constraints of finite financial resources. Maintenance, upgrades, and expansion of infrastructure such as roads and sewers and provision of services for a growing and changing population will be a significant challenge in the years to come. Thus, there is a growing need to target use of these limited resources uh, on infrastructure and service investments that respond to the anticipated growth by maximizing efficiency and minimizing per capita costs. Further, the city needs to meet its future needs in a manner that promotes and retains its existing character that is so strongly valued by the community. Thank you, Jay. So, so far you've kind of heard the background and the process and the steps that we have taken to reach the point where we are this evening and in building that body of knowledge and that understanding of the community and also uh, steps moving forward. Uh, so now Monica and I will take you through the document that is before you here this evening and our recommendations based on what we have heard. So the document that is in front of you contains the main elements that we were tasked with working on over these past six months, which are the introduction, land use, and housing chapters. Now, as you can see here in this diagram, ultimately the comp plan or the comprehensive plan uh, once it is fully developed uh, or fully updated, will include many more elements than those, including capital facilities, parks, utilities, transportation, natural systems. And all of these relate back to land use and ultimately to the vision that has been established. And through that, we feel that the connections theme helps to tie all those together. And also, as you can see, the center strategy um, tied with connections begins to be used as a tool that can potentially inform land use moving forward. Now, within the document, uh, the introduction lays out the vision and kind of the background on uh, community outreach. And then within land use and housing uh, are enumerated goals uh, based on what has been heard of the community vision and then po specific policies uh, that can be used to achieve those goals. Uh, in addition, as a part of this document, uh, there are some new components and approach uh, that have been used, again, uh, touching on connections. Uh, just a large theme and just a broad message that we have heard throughout this process and we feel is valuable, not only in connecting the elements of the comp plan, but also in connecting Port Orchard and the, the vision that exists. Uh, also, the center strategy and citizen engagement strategy, those are two components that we developed in addition to the primary elements uh, to help inform the document. And Monica will go into greater detail about what the center's strategy and the citizen engagement strategy entail. And then finally, you'll notice throughout the document are issue in focus boxes. Uh, what those are is they simply take some key elements and detail them further. So again, as we look at this larger theme of connections, we felt um, it was valuable to point out some of the ways in which these can play out uh, in the city. Of course, this is by no means an exhaustive list. We believe that um, the theme and meaning of connection continue to evolve and affect many different areas of the city. But 
some of the message that we've heard is that it's important to connect individual neighborhoods to the greater city. Port Orchard is made up of a number of different neighborhoods with different characters and different people. And we've heard that they may be a bit disjointed and that there is a potential to connect them to the greater image um, that is Port Orchard. Connecting people to the waterfront. Uh, we've consistently heard that there is a desire for a stronger use of the water in recreation and in commerce and just in general um, capitalizing on the opportunity that exists there to connect citizens with the water as a resource. Uh, along with that, as you've heard, downtown has been a consistent theme, uh, connecting people to downtown uh, in order to engage with businesses and shops there, contribute to a greater vitality down downtown. And then related to those, relating the downtown and the waterfront themselves. Because of the close proximity, uh, downtown and the waterfront have an opportunity to connect well and to foster and create a more cohesive core and whole for the city. Uh, connecting people via land use choices that encourage meaningful reaction, or interactions. And what we mean by that is, for instance, if you build housing that's close to shops and restaurants, um, maybe citizens have the potential to uh, walk to those shops and encounter one another on the street and have those sorts of um, chance conversations and that build that greater sense of community and connection. Uh, connecting separate areas of the city with a variety of transportation options we feel is important. Uh, as Scott mentioned earlier in the survey, that desire uh, for being able to walk, bike, um, just in addition to the car, just having those options and that freedom of choice in how to get about the city. Um, with Port Orchard having a long and important history, we feel that the built environment can be better connected to the people through that history. And so whether it's downtown or in other portions of the city, connecting to that historic character um, through the architecture. Similarly to connecting to the waterfront, uh, connecting to the regional trail network. Again, the idea of recreation, taking advantage of the beauty and the natural resources that exist here uh, within the city. Also along those lines, parks. Uh, the city of Port Orchard has a number of parks, uh, but they are fairly separated and they could be better connected <clears throat> not only to the homes that are nearby to those parks, but also better connected to each other to form a larger um, green space network for the city. And then finally, the last two points, uh, better connecting uh, citizens and government and business and government. Uh, we have heard both from citizens the desire for uh, stronger engagement with the government process um, and also from you all and from, from city staff, the ability to just better connect with citizens so that way there's a cohesive vision and, and movement forward. And also uh, with businesses, we recognize that there is a unique partnership and opportunity uh, that can exist uh, when government and business uh, catch hold of a vision and are able to connect uh, to further that moving forward. Thank you, Ross. Okay, so I'm about to introduce the center strategy and the civic engagement strategy. And these are um, components that we worked on outside of the chapters that we were updating. So based on what we heard from citizens at our public meetings and at our focus groups, we recommend implementing a strategy for designating centers in Port Orchard. The center strategy is derived from the Kitsap Countywide planning policies, which outline four different types of centers in the cities of Kitsap County. The intention of these centers is to provide a focus for population growth and resource allocation. Port Orchard already has three designated centers under the county, but the city could take this strategy further and designate centers in areas that are already experiencing high levels of activity. As we previously mentioned, Port Orchard will need to account for future directed growth in the area, and we found that centers seem to be the best strategy to account for this. For this plan, we have developed a framework for designating these centers. This is based on the fact that recent annexations have enlarged the city boundaries, so certain neighborhoods may not have access to the older city centers such as the historic downtown and the South Kitsap Mall. The strategy designates additional city centers that could provide hubs of activity for those new neighborhoods and allows access to the resources, housing, and employment that they may need. So, 
Designating centers is a land use technique that can be used to manage and define future growth and to keep growth harmonious with the community plans. It can be thought of as a priority growth district where the city can concentrate growth to help preserve the condition of the environment. Enacting the center strategy can enhance the larger community as it benefits the entire city. And there are many advantages to designating centers. Uh, beginning with efficiency, uh, the center strategy could improve efficiency by making housing, infrastructure, and business development concurrent. Concurrency helps to concentrate growth and to allocate resources effectively so that no time or money is wasted. The centers could also concentrate growth in a particular area of the city, which could provide Port Orchard with the opportunity to retain the large amount of open space that the city already has. And in addition, the opportunity to retain the community character by allowing other areas to remain the way that they are. In addition, um, centers could also allow compact spaces of activity and provide concentrated housing and employment opportunities. This could increase the chances for residents to live and work in the same area and thus allow a shorter commute time to work. Centers can also address housing issues because concentrated population growth can be supported by a variety of housing types and also create the potential for more affordable housing opportunities. And lastly, in keeping with our connections theme, centers could allow a stronger connection to parks and open space. And that is actually one of the criteria that we have outlined for potential areas that could be centers. So here's our criteria for designating centers. And this includes areas that have fast, frequent, and reliable transit service. Areas that have opportunities for redevelopment due to a substantial amount of vacant or underutilized land areas that have existing development patterns that would support a center so that they can grow with minor changes in public investment, areas that allow for a mix of densities and non-residential activities that support residential use, um, areas that have opportunities to be connected by bicycle and or pedestrian facilities to adjacent areas and nearby public amenities. In addition, our criteria looks at places that are near the principal arterial network for easy auto access and delivery of goods, areas that are near open space that is available for public use or opportunities that exist to provide public open space in the future, and lastly, areas that are in established assisting living facilities um, to provide easy access for those who may not be able to drive anymore. So the city may consider looking at this criteria and maybe see what areas of Port Orchard would fit. And the next step after that would be to conduct a review process and gain support on this idea so that it can actually be implemented. And we tested out this idea of centers at our open house event on May 8th, and we received a lot of great and positive feedback from Port Orchard citizens, business owners, homeowners, and even city staff. We strongly recommend adopting the strategy <coughs> to help create hubs of activity and achieve the growth goals required by the county. So in addition to the center strategy, we have also developed a civic engagement strategy as well. This strategy is derived from the public, partici public participation methods that we used to inform the policies in the plan. Residents expressed feeling disconnected from the planning process. Thus, we have outlined goals that this plan could help accomplish. These include creating an informed citizenry that has knowledge of the planning process, fostering a diverse and inclusive participation in local government as many groups may be underrepresented in the planning process, demonstrating transparency in the planning process so that citizens are aware of the activities of the local government, and creating observable results so that citizens can see actual progress with planning activities. So the civic engagement strategy outlines particular approaches for achieving these goals to obtain a comprehensive involvement of Port Orchard citizens in the planning process. And these strategies encourage active approaches to gaining public participation combined with traditional planning methods. These active approaches include conducting one-on-one -on -one stakeholder meetings like we did with Coffee Oasis and the public market business owners and meeting with community groups such as the South Kitsap County School District and the Rotary Club. In the future, uh, the strategy recommends exploring online programs such as MindMixer, Facebook, and Textizen. MindMixer is an online platform that acts sort of as a virtual town hall where citizens in the city can discuss issues and share ideas and even track progress on different planning activities. 
Text is in is a civic dialogue platform where the city can pose questions on posters and in public places, and then citizens can respond via text message. These online tools, combined with more common tools such as Facebook and Twitter, can help the city reach out to more citizens and gain more instant and direct feedback. In addition, um, as we previously mentioned, Port Orchard is now made up of multiple neighborhoods due to annexations. These neighborhoods each have their own character and needs, and one idea that is outlined in the civic engagement strategy is to have a representative neighborhood council. This is one idea that could bring the interests of different neighborhoods together so that they feel that their concerns are being heard and addressed. So these strategies can be combined with more traditional methods such as open houses and public meetings to achieve a comprehensive civic engagement so that citizens of Port Orchard can feel connected to the planning process. Thank you, Monica. So moving forward, uh, if our team had more time to work with the city, we would have done some more work on transportation planning. Uh, specifically, we would have liked to have done a downtown parking study since we've heard that is an issue, uh, rec a recurring issue. And also we would have looked into the Safe Routes to School program, which is uh, run at the federal level and it helps uh, kids walk and bike to school in a safe manner. Uh, we also would have done more targeted outreach. We didn't hear a lot from youth, uh, Navy personnel, or low income people. But otherwise, over the next two years, the next steps are for the planning staff to draft the other elements of the plan, which, uh, as mentioned, include utilities, transportation, parks, et cetera, uh, hold multiple public hearings, uh, do some studies, and then in 20, early 2016, the city council will adopt the, the new plan, or the updated plan. So in conclusion, we think that Port Orchard's assets ensure that it will retain a high quality of life for the years to come. Uh, people are continuing to live and do business here because of the city's great environmental, economic, and social aspects. As a Port Orchard native, I believe that making connections between people, government, business, and everything else will help make a good city a great city. Thank you. And I believe now we have time for uh, questions and comments from the council. Thank you very much. Council. Nice job. Yeah, that is a nice job. I guess I have a question, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Mr. Charles. In your scoping out the city, for a better word, and looking at, at the assets we have and the you know, God-given vistas and mountains and different things, did you get a feeling for the city as it's laid out now and how it might be laid out in the future? Like, we, we've got a lot of old buildings and revitalization is coming and how that revitalization takes place and, and how those buildings interact, say, with the, as you mentioned earlier, a, a potential future waterfront plan. Did you, any of you get a kind of a vision of, of looking at what we have now and then thinking what it, maybe what it could be? Um. I believe that um, for us, that's why we wanted to explore the center strategy, um, because we felt that that would help to capitalize on what is here now. Um, it would be important not to just um, designate centers willy-nilly just anywhere in the city, but recognize that you know places like downtown or um, certain shopping centers or certain places in the city that are already hubs of activity have the potential uh, to serve as those new centers. So still, like you were saying, taking advantage of the structure that is here now, but recognizing that there is that potential for redevelopment. And we feel that um, centers is one approach and that could be adopted to address that. Uh, you, you mentioned, uh, one of you mentioned community uh, outreach groups for the, for the smaller communities within the larger city. Um, have you guys uh, dealt with that very much in, so far in, uh, in any other places or uh, cities? Do you mean personally, if have any of us had experience working Yeah, have you had any experience in with that, how that would work and what that would look like? Uh, these, these individual little smaller communities would just pick their representatives and, and uh, I, I'm not sure how it would be organized. Is there anybody that has any ideas? On uh, Mr. Mayor, I have a few. Okay, <laughs> all right. 
Um, I'm Rick Seffler. I'm the instructor. And, and I, I could say there have been models of doing a focus sort of like charrettes or workshops where you bring folks together. It's not looked and, and proposed to establish a legislative body as much as to get a group together that's representative by invitation um, from time to time and in certain areas to use as a chance to just discuss issues that are pressing and get responses to things that are done. These kind of low-key focus group kind of meetings um, tend to be uh, relatively apolitical, um, can be uh, much more on point because you're dealing with a limited area of the city, um, tend to be fairly informal, but also tend to be very informative. And a number of communities have used them. Um, what we found is often um, folks, it, it's, it, as you could imagine, it often is intimidating, come down to stand at a podium and to raise a concern. It's much more um, engaging to have 12 or 15 people around a table with a facilitated discussion. Um, there's not an agenda as much as to learn what the concerns are and talk about what's being proposed. So we can give you some references uh, for other communities that have established kind of informal network. Um, they're scheduled, um, they're by invitation, um, and they have uh, found traction in getting some good viewpoints voiced. Um, it's for you to determine where those areas are with your staff and-, and Well, it, it, we might use in conjunction with uh, 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 commercial, the little commercial areas, you know, that we, maybe that would be a logical uh, demographic or something. Okay. But we still have a few more uh, public meetings so we could maybe work on that a little bit. Thank you. Council, any other questions? Well, I'll I would just it. like to echo Mr. Patanza's comment. Good job, thank you. This is very impressive. I would I'm like to. Forward to reading them. Yeah. Yeah. I was scanning them <laughs> as you guys were talking, and they always good information. Us, they always want us to ask questions before we've really got into the material. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I have one question. Okay, Mr. Um, Cartwright. Volume two isn't attached. Are we going to get that sometime soon? Oh, you read ahead. Uh, vol volume two of the appendices, I believe, is about 200 pages long. Okay. So to save a few trees, we thought we'd give it to you digitally, and you'll have it all at your disposal. That works great. Thank you. <laughs> um, I would like, if we, if time permits, and I think we we were scheduled for till nine, weren't we? Wasn't that to? Can I would like to open it up to to the citizens and see if they have any comments at this time. So, yes, please. Okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's uh, let's get the hand mic, and, and if you would wait until the mic gets here, we could hear you better. And, and you're also, my name is Chuan Panchukian. Um, it's my son Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Go Huskies! But um, my question is, Scott worked on a real interesting project when he was an internship. Uh, I don't know, a few years ago before Nick came on. And he took that whole Kmart building that's been abandoned and redesigned it into condominiums with um, a place for the uh, residents or maybe future residents to have. Um, it was very green. They could have their own gardens. And I was ever wondering if the council, when you have an issue like that with you know, commercial space that's now emptied, and I understand that SARS has gone out too. What do, does it ever come up in discussion, maybe I'm not here for council meetings, but what does the city ever, you know, envision for these types of uh, land use, these, these abandoned uh, businesses? Because right now, when I um, first came to Port Orchard, uh, 26 years ago, it was, really cool i love this place and but we had the kmart and um it looks pretty bad right now i mean if <laughs> so my question to you is do you ever plan on what you're going to do with these um this commercial space well it's private property so oh, to, to a degree uh government can't make edicts about private property i mean that's always been my position um, we want to encourage anybody that has a legitimate uh, business to come to Port Orchard. I think uh, every single person up here would be go an extra mile to, to talk to somebody that might have a business that could. Okay, well, uh, having said that, I don't mean to interrupt, but having said that, do you promote 
the sale or uh, is private property right but do you ever communicate with the the owner or the developers or to sell that land or is it out of I, your hands no i haven't i haven't myself okay so it's basically that. out I, of I, your hands I, i'm not speaking for the council there. though yes well Mr. you know the kitsap economic development alliance uh, which is active throughout our county um, is well aware of that space because mm -hmm. it, when we're trying to attract new business and new development in the county and in the various uh, cities, they are, they've inventoried what we have and they are well aware of that space and have talked about it for different projects. Nothing has come okay. to fruition, but it's not like uh, we're not aware of it. It's not like it's not out there for new folks coming to town. So. Okay. You know, as the mayor said, it is private, but that doesn't mean we're not aware of it. Okay, and and this, I think I only get three minutes, but I have one more oh, question no, you, for you. I don't know. We have the three-minute rule tonight. <laughs> oh, do so, we? Well, as long as, as, long as you're not plowing the same ground twice, I think you've got the the. I cut the wrong one. Yeah. Okay, to, I'm living in McCormick Woods, and I just understand that uh, it's a little slightly different, but a little thing with land use is since the. Um, a lot of people have gotten marijuana permits to grow, and apparently it's on Oak Clifton Road. And um, I just, maybe I didn't get the memo, but what is, what are you guys thinking for to allow these people to grow this, these, this marijuana, even if medical, I don't care, and <laughs> I mean, is it across from Juvie or what? Because I'm just kind of really disturbed about this. Um, can you imagine? I mean, it's kind of like, you know, I understand the pros and cons of the medical marijuana and the state Washington and the federal laws, but what what is your reasoning on this? <laughs> That's you know that probably is 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 not a fair question to d answer tonight because I don't think anybody up here has thought about that for you tonight. Um, I'm having a town hall meeting on the 12th, okay. and uh, I've had several people ask similar questions to what you just uh, asked about. And uh, so the town hall meeting I'm having starts at 6:30 in this very room, and one of the subjects I said we might talk about is marijuana. It, and we can talk about it in any way, shape, or form, because at the town hall meeting, uh, we sit in a circle and we pass the mic around. So um, uh, there'll be chance to make comments like that, and then maybe to, you know, anybody could, uh, could say what they think also. Probably that'd be the better venue than right now, because That's, we didn't really have any this on our agenda at all today. Well, I just noticed in the Port Orchard Independent uh, that uh, they are going to be allowing these shops on, was it Bethel? I think Nick mentioned his name was there. Bethel and uh, somewhere in Sedgwick. Is this really legal? I mean, I know you have to be within a thousand feet from a school or anything, but really? I mean, we're gonna be called Pot Orchard? I mean, I have an issue with I, this. I think I think you need to come on the twelfth. I think because, so you know, too. But that, I'm that just giving you a be, preview. We'll be live and <laughs> <laughs> we'll be live and be on our website and uh, yeah, that's the kind of comments and, and discussion we want to have. Is, okay, is, is that what we really want here? Yeah, yeah, it's what we really want because really Port Orchard is awesome. I know we've got some issues, but this is a great place. I know people that once they get across the bridge, they love this place. Um, they. But, you know, I'm sorry, you know. Okay. Well, I think we better just concentrate on questions to the comp plan. Comp plan. To the comp well, plan it does, to because it has tonight. a lot to do with land use. And you're talking about issues with the Im image of Port, Port Orchard. Mm -hmm. I think this is relevant, but I'll see you on the 12th. Okay. So thank you. <laughs> I don't know that I need to introduce myself, but because um, I'm fairly well known, but it's Bill Palmer. Um, I had a couple of questions, but first I'd like to commend uh, the students for the work that they did. I think it's going to prove valuable. I'll be anxious to read your document in more detail. Um, there are a couple of things that came to mind during your presentation. Um, 
I don't know if Ron Casperson is still an active professor, but uh, in this community, uh, he should be fairly well known because back in the 80s, he did a design study for the downtown area, and I think he updated it in the 90s, according to my recollection. The, uh, he also happens to be a classmate of mine, so <clears throat> I'm somewhat aware of things that he did in the past. And it brings up the issue of documents that have been prepared in the past and how they play into uh, current planning uh, programs. And some of the recommendations that Ron made, I think, still have value and represent uh, something that the city of Port Orchard is still willing to consider. Uh, the next comment has to do with a particular bugaboo of mine, because you mentioned the countywide planning policies. And <clears throat> this is, uh, I, I wrote a very extensive critique of those countywide planning policies in 2012. And um, county uh, gets up, regional coordinating council went ahead to adopt them and made virtually no changes. My bugaboo is that it seems that uh, people that write policies don't know how to do it. Um, and those policies, the countywide planning policies, are still plagued with problems. I happen to have had conversation recently with the director for the Department of Community Development, Kitsap County, uh, and <clears throat> their uh, thinking about how they're going to update the countywide plan, which has to be updated by 2016. And I asked him directly if he was going to include countywide planning policies in their plan. And his response was, no, they weren't, which rather surprised me for a lot of reasons, one of which relates to the Growth Management Act. Um, but I'm interested in the recommendation that the city of Port Orchard might be including them uh, at some juncture in your uh, comprehensive plan. And if they're taken in literally, you will find me objecting to them because of the way they're written and the subject matter they address that uh, now, my personal opinion, don't think are applicable to Port Orchard or Kitsap County, for that matter. Um, <clears throat> at any rate, uh, I commend your effort, and I'll be looking very much looking forward to reading your report. I think we will have the appendices, the 200 pages, uh, electronically on our website, probably <laughs> okay, I was going to say next week, first of next week, but uh, tomorrow morning it is, I guess. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, barring any glitches, but it will be very soon. Tomorrow, ideally, Monday, at, you know, if there's something comes up. But so they'll be there. They'll be available. Uh, I, too, want to thank you guys for all of your... I, I made it to most of the meetings, at least at the beginning of a couple, and then I had other things and then came back. Um, I, want to, uh, I want to applaud your efforts, uh, especially when you went downtown to the market. They went downtown and spent about three hours, three or four hours at a booth at the, the public market, the farmer's market, actually. And uh, so you went that extra mile to get some data for, for your project. Uh, you, uh, we didn't maybe have as good a turnout the first meeting, so you went down and, and asked people, and I really give you a lot of credit for doing that. I appreciate that. I think this is going to make uh, cities comp plan really stand out with a lot of other small cities being told, well, <clears throat> you might have done a public process like Port Orchard did, you know. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty sure, and we'll give you credit for that uh, for, uh, to a large degree because of what you've done here. So thank you very much. Members of the public, any other? Oh, yep, you've got it, okay. Well, my name's Alyssa Whittleton, and since I already had the mic, 
my question was just answered because I wanted to make sure it was available electronically. Thank you for that. But I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I thought you guys did an awesome job and you really listened and put it together in a cohesive way. And thank you very much. Hi, I'm Kirsten. Um, I'm with Reed Real Estate and Port Orchard, I'm a new agent. And I had one thing, one suggestion about advertising for the comprehensive plan. We do have the Fathoms of Fun coming up. And I know like I'm new to real estate, but the one thing I've learned is getting your butt, like that bug in somebody's ear, you know, and really sticking with somebody. And I know it's like when I've talked to my friends that are a little bit younger, you know, and my age, they have no idea about this stuff. And I'm like, well, go online, fill out the survey. You know, it's really important. Everybody wants to see Port Orchard grow. And I mean, me starting my family and getting married here, I want to see, you know, a place where my kids can grow up. And all of my friends that are my age, you know, all have little kids and they really want to see Port Orchard rise up a little bit more. And I think, you know, it's like if we did the Fathoms of Fun, you know, did a nice like booth where with kids stuff and you know, bring your kids over here and that's gonna bring young families over and that's gonna get the people that, you know, will be growing up the next generation in this <clears throat> city, you know, and also we are holding an after hours event for the Chamber of Commerce on the twenty sixth at Reed Real Estate and if somebody wanted to come and talk to the local businesses, maybe give us a handout, I'd be more than welcome to, you know, get a little bit more involved. So, and you guys did really great. That was really awesome. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. You know, and uh, funny you should mention uh, food, fun, and festivals, or did you? I, I mentioned it, didn't I? Food, fun, and festivals, Port Orchard's having a, yeah, <laughs> Port Orchard actually on Saturday is getting, is having an art walk. We've got four, four uh, bands or, or groups spread out around town and it starts at three and of course we have the farmers market that starts at 10 10 or 11 and then we have the public market which just opened here about a month ago so uh, lots of things happening on saturday in downtown port orchard bring your children come down uh, I, there isn't a time that i don't see 50 to 100 young youngsters playing at marina park it's a beautiful park and couldn't be a better setting than psns in the background so yeah Please come. Um, I was wondering, you've talked about the, the different areas for the growth in existing places. Could you list some of the places that you've identified as strategic uh, centers? For, uh, um, oh. Oh, Um, so, three different areas, um, aside from the three that were designated by the county as centers, um, were Bethel and Lund, Bethel and Sedgwick, and Sydney and Sedgwick, and these are just some areas that already have a lot of activity, and um, we're encouraging further consideration into them, but we're not saying that those have to be, well, that's why we developed the criteria, <coughs> so there could be further research into looking at the whole city and seeing where some areas might fit this criteria. So. And what, are they, those three the same as the county? No, the, the three in the county are the, um, the downtown, the South Kitsap Mall, and then the Tremont Community Services. So, yeah. <laughs> and in, in the county document, it is called the South Kitsap Mall incorrectly, I think, because it's the uh, Old Town Center. <laughs> It used to be the South Kitsap Mall. Yeah, a lot of us just, just refer to that as Town Center now. Town Center Mall. So in your report, there's six centers that recommended by the county for growth. Are they Yeah, and, and, and at the staff level in our analysis, I think we've probably identified about 10 total candidates in the city that we uh, think ought to be explored at some point. So. Uh, we'll be discussing that at the Planning Commission in the future, I believe. I have one critique here as I'm flipping through it on page 25, just your colors. You know, the city as a whole versus the urban growth area. It's tough to distinguish your two colors there. You could grab a different color because maybe the urban growth area versus the city. It'd be easier to read the map. Which 
225. 2-25. We can fix that. <laughs> if you're colorblind, it probably looks all the same, too. Um, uh, is that my problem? <laughs> we have an issue between what it looked like on the computer screen and what it looked like on the back. Everybody knows now. <laughs> I have a question for, oh, sorry, I think Fred, the other Fred did first. Fred DP, South Kitsap. They've done a great job, I think, in doing their homework there. I'm um, sitting here thinking to myself, one of the aspects that uh, seems to be lacking in a lot of the comprehensive planning is um, how to implement it. It's always easy to get it into a conceptual form or theoretic form, but getting it into practice is another issue. I think it would be nice if um, possibly you could get this young, bright set of minds here who have a new set of glasses to maybe look into the possibility of what kind of incentives could be used in making this to occur, such as grants, uh, um, all, all the different avenues that we currently use, but to have their introspective view of it would be, I think, a kind of an aspect no other comprehensive plan has really put forth on this thing. And since they are as uh, studious, obviously, as you can tell by the results as they are, it would be a good opportunity for the council and the community to possibly look into how do we make it work, which has always been the lacking component to all these comprehensive plans. East Bremerton just got pulled back, Bethel Corridor plan is defunct. And so putting that aspect into it would be a suggestion I think might uh, bring a lot of this to real world. If you want to look at the public-private partnership, and I did hear you uh, <clears throat> talk about that, um, do a little research on how Silverdale evolved. Um, because it wouldn't have happened, it wouldn't be the center that it is today if it were not for the public-private partnership that took place back in the early, eight, late 70s and early 80s. And also look at the Ridgetop um, development because that took place through a master plan process. And um, there was definite public private partnership involved in that. And that uh, is a model for how things could be done, um, but too often aren't. I, I would also like to comment on the initial comment there. And I think the students made a good point about making sure that the uh, there's consistency within the comprehensive plan, that uh, things start with the vision, they flow to the land use element, and then all of these other units, all these other elements are connected to uh, sort of the, the overarching vision. And I think specifically when you talk about utilities and transportation and how the money is spent for, for those uh, types of infrastructure, that's going to be one of the main things that drives the development that would or would not be consistent with your plan. So ultimately it's really important to, uh, to connect those things and ensure that as we develop those other elements that they fall in line with the, the vision that's been started and what the, the citizens have told us. And also to be uh, looking at budgeting, and this is something that uh, as cities get bigger they do more, is doing six-year capital improvement programs so that you actually are uh, following through with uh, transportation investment that really helps you achieve your goals. And so that's one of the things Mark, has been, Mark Dorsey has been working on, uh, stormwater comprehensive plans, uh, water system plans, sewer system plans, and, and bringing those things all together and trying to make all of our documents sort of cohesive is going to really help uh, us achieve this vision. So, Tim. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chang and then, okay. I had a question for all of you who worked on this to see what was your perception of the city when you first came and when you finished the draft and would any of you consider living, staying and living here? <laughs> uh, well, I'll just, you can just start off with, uh, for me and then go over. Um, so my an initial thoughts about the city when I first came was um, 
I, I kept getting the sense that there was this sort of disconnection and lack of community involvement. But the more that I worked in the community and I was involved with a lot of the focus groups and a lot of the one-on-one -on -one meetings, I realized that a lot of the, the citizens in Port Orchard, they are involved in their community. A lot of people are in different clubs and different organizations and everything. It's just bridging that gap between that sort of community involvement and then getting involved with the local government. That was something that we really wanted to emphasize, just sort of bringing that spirit of being, of caring about the community, but to that level of caring about the local government and what they had a role in everything. Oh, and as far as living here, um, maybe in the future to raise children and everything, but <laughs> as far as my, my young 20-something-year-old interests are, I, yeah, <laughs> you guys can understand that. I sense boring. <laughs> Oh, nothing. <laughs> okay. Do we, do we all feel like we should answer this? or it, it, If you feel, feel like, like, whatever one if, feels like answering. If you feel like, I would like to hear what you have to say. I, I'm from northern New England and have spent most of my life in towns that aren't that different from Port Orchard. So I feel very at home here. And... Uh, I also, I am really loving living in Seattle, but I do see myself eventually returning to live in a community probably not that different from Port Orchard, so it seems like a great place to me. I grew up here. Can I take a pass? <laughs> <laughs> um, but just to quickly answer the question, I think I would um, if I was to come back to raise a family, but um, I would also have to combine that with uh, employment and uh, entertainment and those kind of activity opportunities would be, um, those are important to me. Um, yeah, so I first got to Port Orchard on the foot ferry and um, the first thing that I thought was that it was a shame that a parking lot dominated the waterfront. Um, uh, I also didn't really get the get that much of a small town feel just because I didn't have that much exposure, but getting out into other areas of the town um, I do get that feeling. And, and really, just spending more time, I think, in downtown, it kind of grew on me um, a little bit. Um, I, uh, I like quiet places. Um, I'm naturally introverted, um, so I could see myself coming to a place like Port Orchard, um, even Port Orchard, just because it's very well connected to Seattle. And I think that's, that's kind of the kind of life that I like, is being a little bit out of the big city, but have access to it so I can go to it. So I, I think that's a real strength that Port Orchard has um, and might be able to market to, uh, to new residents. Yes. Okay. Mr. Clausen, you had your hand up a minute ago. Well, I just wanted to make a comment in regards to Nick's comment about making sure we tie all these different elements together and and we get behind the, the capital plan and support it, things of that nature. And as it relates to transportation, I just wanted to introduce Ed. Raise your hand if you could. Ed is an employee of Kitsap Transit, and he's our transportation land use planner who uh, was hired primarily to work with the various jurisdictions, the cities and the county, as all of the different jurisdictions go forward and, and uh, update their comp plans. So, Nick. Right behind you is an asset for you to help and uh, help me. <laughs> Good. But in, and Nick will be working with that. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, uh, KRCC started a process last year, or this year, I guess, with doing a countywide multimodal transportation plan. And uh, we're actually going to take it, we as Kitsap Transit is actually going to take that over and take it to the next phase. Uh, in 2015 so I think there's a lot of good work that's going on all around the county that I think we're all going to benefit by and I I commend your comments Nick because I think it's critical that we make sure that not just within our plan but our plan is also connected with the rest of the community because things like connection to Seattle uh, you know those are all elements that affect multiple jurisdictions so I think it's a good time Okay. Oh, who's got the... George in the back. Oh, yeah, somebody 
That's George. They're, they're red. Thank you. My name is George Larson. I live up on Farragut Avenue. Uh, my wife and I were on a road trip for a month, uh, got home, and there was a survey on our email that, uh, and I'm, I, I'm assuming it must, it sounds an awful, awful lot like it was what you guys did. Um, and one of the points that you were making was, you know, the connection between the community and the planners and the, and um, I, I took considerable amount of time and filled it out and uh, I got no response in terms of did anybody get it, let alone read it, I have no idea. Uh, so I think it would be good, uh, you know, if somebody sends something to at least say, you know, got it, thank you. Uh, so I'm assuming when I hit send it went to, must have gone to somebody. And, uh, but, you know, that's, that's part of closing the loop on the communication. <clears throat> By the way, thank you for what you're doing. That's great. So I think all of, in the appendix, which will be online tomorrow, you're actually going to be able to go in and see all of the written responses. So you might see some uh, writing that looks like yours. So you can double check. Nick, I think there's one, one more hand up over here. In your presentation, you were talking about the connections with the parks, and I was wondering how have other communities implemented, you know, maybe that are a little bit ahead of us and have, um, I don't use the parks much, but I don't know much about the parks here, so I'm just wondering how, I know that you want them close to your centers, but how do you get the, how have other places made it where people start using them more, or have they been implemented? I would say one key thing that helps to increase park usage is uh, when you increase the amount of users that live in immediate adjacency to a park. Um, often if you have to drive a considerable distance or it's difficult to park or it's difficult to, to walk or access that park, um, people won't use it. Um, so I, in a number of cities, I think that you'll, um, you can see where um, either housing or retail might abut uh, the edge of the park to where the park has a potential to maybe even become a bit of a, of a gathering space around the nodes that's built there. I think that's also <clears throat> the part of the intent of the center strategy is that, um, say, if there's a center located next to a park and you find more people and more restaurants and more shops that are built immediately adjacent to that, then you have that flow and that of, of users between those. In addition, in speaking to connecting the overall park system, um, possibly building more trails uh, to connect the different parks that exist in the city, or trails to directly connect neighborhoods to parks that are um, nearby. Um, well, yeah, again, you guys did such an awesome job. So really, I know you put a lot of effort into it, but I do have a, a question. Um, I wasn't really sure um, with the projected population growth. Um, I really need to know, or like to know, how are our schools handi handling these, um, you know, the influx that I know that these schools are getting um, pretty crowded. Um, I think there is a, was a proposed high school on Old Clifton Road. I think that the city might have bought the land, but no, because I understand our high school is like the most populated. Um, I don't know, west of the Mississippi or something, but um, did, did I miss this point? Did you, guys, did you guys have any idea on schools and what the city, what the city could do to help with this projected population growth? I, I can actually speak to that because I got a public notice in the mail uh, this week from the school district that they have posted uh, a SEPA decision on their updated capital facilities plan and so they've just updated their plan and yes, they do own property off of Old Clifton Road for a future high school and I think that's probably uh, at least 10 years away but I, you know, they talk about it regularly in our meetings. But I would encourage you to uh, um, track down a copy of their new capital facilities plan because it has a ton of information about how they're preparing for growing class sizes and uh, 
all things to do with providing the space that is needed for learning. And is that on a website? On their website, I have a physical yeah, it's, copy. We, it's, not, it's not something the city gets involved in schools. It's South Kitsap School District, yeah. And that, that's, that takes, you know, covers all of South Kitsap, cities, county, and everything. So that's to comment that's, on. I'm sorry, Mayor. No. Just to comment on the high school, um, that has been brought up in the past, and the voters have voted the bond down. So it's up to the voters to, when they vote for the school district. Um, I don't know how long the city has had the property for the new high school. Um, no, um, we we don't have the property. The school, the school district, district owns it. School district owns that property. Exactly. Yeah, we're not. We're not even associated with the South Kitsap School District. Yeah. <laughs> but at the next uh, town hall meeting, if you'd like to come and make comments about <laughs> schools, you can do that too. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, uh, you know, we uh, number five here is citizens' comments, and I think. Uh, does any citizens have any additional comments? Last chance. Okay, Nick, what, uh, anything for the good of the order uh, other than just our, our thank yous for each one of you? And, and, and by, this isn't by any means all of you because I remember there was at least another eight or 10 that were also working on this project, so. Uh. Well, yeah, I, I have nothing further, I think. Uh, we, you will see in your council packets for next Tuesday, there is going to be a discussion on centers. And so we'll continue that discussion. So I encourage you to look at the, the plan over the weekend and uh, consider that and as you uh, look at the materials in your packet. But uh, I think I'd just like to thank everybody for turning out tonight and for making this a, an excellent process. And uh, I've, I've worked with uh, the University of Washington now uh, this is on three of these types of projects, uh, once as a student and then twice uh, as a client here and, and previously in Eatonville and I think it keeps getting better every year as I get more experience in helping manage the project but but this group has put out the highest quality work that I've seen uh, for many of the students and uh, no disrespect to Katie who was in the, the no, I, didn't oh, okay. <laughs> 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 I, I couldn't remember I knew you were in the, that class well, I, I'm very impressed and uh, I've, I got to be involved in a lot of the process so Thank you all, and uh, could we give them a round? I go to the order, saying uh, we'll adjourn then. We'll adjourn this meeting. Yep. Before you adjourn, I have a comment. This meeting, I really like to see so many of the public here, and I really appreciate everybody coming. This meeting would not have been possible if Mr. Bond had not pushed Contact University of Washington, and I think he uh, he deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it.